My name is Michelle Lou Carriger, and it is my pleasure to present Atha's Award for Outstanding Article in a Journal. This award acknowledges scholarship marked by methodological sophistication, complex, and critical engagement with dramatic texts and performances. The award committee is delighted to recognize the following authors for their outstanding work. The recipient of this year's honorable mention is David Calder for Street Theater in a State of Exception, Performing in Public After Bataclan, published in Contemporary Theater Review. Calder's excellent essay on the Aurillac Street Theater Festival illuminates the paradoxical considerations of street theater's carnivalesque inversion of workaday stricture, while also reflecting the importance of such inversions back onto the pressing concerns of political and military security in the contemporary era of terrorism. As Calder writes, it is insufficient to celebrate street theater as an overturning or suspension of rules when the suspension of rule has become the rule. The 2021 award for outstanding article goes to Colleen Kim Danaher for Looking at Pauline Johnson, Gender, Race, and Del Sartism's Legible Body, published in Theater Journal. Danaher draws a compelling speculative parallel between the early 20th century Haudenosaunee Mohawk performer E. Pauline Johnson's solo lecture circuit performances of native and white identities and the overwhelming popularity of Del Sartist aesthetics for professional and amateur performers. Through painstaking analysis of remarkable primary sources, Danaher traces the convergence of techniques of performance with techniques of seeing to trouble the location of authentic Indian identity. This insight not only illuminates histories of fin de siècle ethnic self-performances, but it also opens up new vistas for analyzing and understanding race, its performativity, and its theatricality for all kinds of theater and performance studies projects. Congratulations, Colleen Kim Danaher. Thank you, Michelle, for that lovely introduction. And thank you, Afa. I'm so delighted to receive this award. It means a lot to be recognized by a community I've long admired and been a part of since 2014. My sincere appreciation goes out to the awards committee for your time and thoughtful consideration of all of the nominations. This article was written over a stretch of time and with the help of many institutions and people. First, I'd like to thank the following institutions for research access and image reproduction permissions. Chiefswood Museum and National Historic Site, Brandt Museum and Archives, the William Reddy Division of Archives and Research Collections at McMaster University and the Vancouver Public Library. Researching, having access to, and reproducing the images of Indigenous peoples is a responsibility, not a right. And I'm grateful to have been entrusted to think both with and against Pauline Johnson's documented history. I'm especially grateful to Spring Salt, Jackie Jamison, and Bradley Mell at Chiefswood Museum for fielding my questions and guiding me through several in-depth visits dating back to 2014. The Chiefswood Board of Trustees generously granted me permission to visit during off-season and a doctoral fellowship from the Social Sciences and Research Council of Canada, the ASTR Helen Critch Chinoy Dissertation Fellowship, and internal grants from Northwestern University funded my research travel. While this essay began life as a dissertation chapter, it really began to take shape during the peripatetic years immediately following my graduation. As a postdoctoral fellow, I found vibrant intellectual communities at Brown University and Amherst College's Center for Humanistic Inquiry. I'd like to especially thank Rebecca Schneider, Patty Ibera, Adrian Keen, and Lily Mangesha at Brown who heard early versions of this work and asked exactly the right questions about stillness and gesture to move it forward. At Amherst, Chris Grove, Pooja Rangan, Kiara Vigil, Martha Umphrey, and the rest of the Chi Speech Image Spectacle Gang, Lee Kornfeld, Amy Johnson, Maria Sidorkina, and Jennifer Pernolo read and commented on drafts, helping me see the forest from the trees. The good people at Theater Journal patiently shepherded this work along while I took a maternity leave and then moved across the continent for a new job. Thank you to editor Sean Metzger and the two anonymous reviewers whose judicious editorial eyes made the piece's arguments, arguments much more succinct. And to previous co-editors Jennifer Parker Starbuck and EJ Westlake, whose desks this manuscript first landed on.
I'm forever grateful to Ramon Rivera Cervera, Christine Bold, Melissa Fung, Sarah Shropshire, Daniel and Wendy Coleman, Danielle Wong, and Jeff Martin for providing material and intangible support throughout the research and writing of this essay. And finally, thank you to all of you, Atha, for this wonderful recognition again. I'm thrilled and humbled to be accepting this award today on the Haldeman Tract, traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples, and just one hour up the road from the Six Nations of the Grand River Reserve, where Pauline Johnson was born and raised. I offer this land acknowledgement as a settler on the land where these treaties have not been honored and where indigenous people face in ongoing occupation, dispossession, cultural genocide, and as we have seen in recent weeks, unspeakable colonial violence. Looking at Pauline Johnson is about looking at the past, but my hope is that it tells us something about looking at the present too. Thank you.